Hello everyone and welcome to the GMS Magazine RPG Reviews. In this episode we bring you a review of Frog Folk of Porphyra. The following review has been written by Tilo Graf, also known as Enzyme Geist. For more reviews like these, please visit his website at enzidegeist.com and please, 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 please support his Patreon. The address is in the show notes as well as on the top left corner if you are watching the video in the YouTube channel rather than listening to our podcast. In this installment of the Porphyra series, clocks in at 57 pages. It has one page front cover, two pages of SRD, with the PDF laid out in 6x9, as in A5, leaving us with 54 pages of content. So, let's take a look. By the way, this book was moved up in the reviewing queue at the request of the Patreon supporters. In case that you were wondering, Porphyra RPG is essentially a continuation of Pathfinder 1. It's fully compatible in the same way as Pathfinder behaved to 3.5, but with several cool features such as scaling fits and the like. Now, it should be noted that this PDF was written before the rules of Porphyra RPG were finalized. In fact, that makes this closer to Pathfinder in several ways, so this is something to, you know, to bear in mind. All right, so um, Frog Folk, um, I mean, who doesn't love them? Um, I sure as heck love me some Griplids, and indeed, these Frog Folk are one of the three races contained herein, with the other two being the Bogarts and the Doafe. We start with the Bogarts, and indeed, the book begins with a really well-written introduction by Perry Fur, one that does a rather excellent job of setting the stage for culture and leitmotifs of the Bogarts, who are said to have ventured to the patchwork planet of Porphyra at the behest of the Great Old Ones, and Bogarts are resembling humanoid monstrous toads, as opposed to the Griplis being frog-like. The Bogarts, as depicted here, are an extremely primal society native to swamplands, and they still feel the sting of the elemental lords losing the new god war, reserving particular enmity for the Kyuta. The details provided, which include sample names, provide a really compelling picture. However, mechanic-wise, the Bogarts get a plus two strength and constitution a minus two intelligence, which makes them somewhat lopsided regarding their preferred classes. They are medium humanoids, uh, with the Bogart subtype speed 20 feet, swim speed 30 feet, and they get dark vision and low light vision. Th this is one of the changes where the PDF is closer to Pathfinder 1 than Porphyra RPG, as Porphyra RPG dark vision has no range and includes low light vision. Bogarts have whole breath and get a 10 feet ton secondary attack, which is interesting here. Uh, this tongue locks you and the target down, but does not interact with the drag and pull rules, instead locking you and the target in place in relation to each other, making the tongue a pretty potent tool. However, since it's easy to break loose, there is no reliable way to achieve this. Steel Theoretically, this would allow a tribe of Bogarts to use their tongues to limit the movement of targets that they shouldn't be able to restrict. This does not paralyze them or anything, but it does allow Bogart groups to lock down targets' action economy-wise. While this does seem a bit odd to me, it may well be intentional. Still, a certain sense of disjunction did not leave me here. Bogarts get Marsh Strike and the mind affected Sonic, charisma governed, terrifying croak ability usable once per hour as a standard action. A target can end up being briefly shaken, and the ability has a caveat that prevents spamming it, that lists no range. I assume as far as can be heard, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there should be some sort of range somewhere. Alternative racial traits include a bite attack that does not pro properly specify the damage type. Profiler's convention is bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for that. 
some water themes, species, and a really cool one that allows them to communicate across surprising distances. This one in particular, the Toad Song, has some seriously cool repercussions regarding how you can depict them, and sets them really apart. At that, I really like it. There is also a replacement for the tongue that lets you make a 10 foot, 5 foot steps on a successful acrobatics check. The DC here is a very low flat DC, when it would have made more sense to at least somewhat tie this to the threatening creatures. But then again, the Fire RPG has gotten rid of much of the bonus stacking tricks, so yeah. The PDF includes four nice, properly coded race traits and three racial feats that scale with levels. Exploding Words punishes critical hits against you with acid damage. Marshmaster nets you a plus two bonus to AC, initiative, perception in Marsh's later plus four, and Toad Boss Bully provides minor debuffs to creatures you demoralize or hit with melee attacks, but only one target may be affected at any given time. I assume that affecting a new target ends the previous effect, but this has not been explicitly stated. Dwarfi are essentially Bactrations deep ones, who look like humans but suffer a minus two penalty to charisma upon reaching middle age. They get either guilds, plus one natural armor, plus two to perception or resist sonic five, should be resistance. The bonus types are not codified properly either, and formatting differs from how Fire RPG usually does that. It's odd. This is not included in the racial traits. Dwarfi get a plus two to any characteristic should the ability score. Minus two to charisma are medium aberrations, have dark vision, again not the profile version, and resistance acid and sonic five, once more erroneously referred to as resist. They have an unnatural aura and a properly codified plus four racial bonus to athletics made to swim and may take ten while swimming. Four alternate racial traits are included, and I have no complaints here. They are well balanced and precisely presented, including easier item activation due to history of forbidden lore, SPs, etc. And the PDF also supports some cool traits. My favorite states you are fascinated with the Great Old Ones, but their cults are too gauche for your membership. This lets your mythos spells add it to spell lists, and it made me genuinely chuckle. Hidden Terrain is a great racial feat. It lets you summon an invisible monster that later becomes greater invisible. Odd Goat Legacy nets you limited fast healing and later no breath and acid immunities. I like this. The Gripply, as depicted herein, get plus two dexterity and wisdom, minus two strength in their small have the Bogart subtype, darker vision, and the same issues before, 30 feet speed on land and in water, 20 feet climb speed, plus 8 racial bonus to athletics checks made to climb and swim, plus 4 racial bonus to stealth in marshes and forested areas. They can also fall in a more controlled manner if not overly encumbered. They always have a running start for jumping purposes, marsh stride, a constitution governed toxic skin, tracks, luggage, stiffened, staggered, kept in check by limited uses, and weapon familiarity with nets. Overall, it's a pretty powerful race regarding the utility. In the alternate racial characteristics, something has gone wrong. There is one bog hunter which nets you a plus one trait bonus to hit and damage vermin. That should be a trait and its cost should not be vastly superior jumper and toxic skin. I'm pretty sure that this should be a trade and have no cost. Gripply also get the cool communication angle, and toxic skin may be replaced with a skin that is permeable, allowing for bladders storing potions to be smashed and consumed more quickly. This one is really cool. The four traits that are presented here are once more all mechanically tight and properly codified. There are three racial feats, Poison Spits, 
lets you speed detoxing, but since it's just once a day, that may not be the smartest move. Frog style is a cool style feat that lets you bounce around when critting with two cool follow-up tricks that allows you to potentially throw and follow folks. Split second leaps lets you once per combat avoid a ranged attack with a reflex save. I generally like this, but should not have a nonsensical per combat use and instead specify a fixed duration. The PDF also presents new racial spells. Porphyra differentiates between uh, spell lists, which is one fantastic change. For the purpose of readability of this review, I will put spell names in italics if you're going to read the review in the website, even though Porphyra RPG's convention is not to do so. Three variants of core box, pretty self-explanatory, what that does, are included. Curse of the Ogdote is a nasty permanent curse that afflicts the target with essentially disadvantage on d20 rolls. Key and jewel points the caster towards the nearest magic item, excluding those in the caster's possession and those of the allies, which is a great time saver at the table. Plague of Wars is interesting in that it is a debuff, but for Bogarts and Apparition, it acts as a buff. Toe of Frog is a nice little gripply curse, and Wall of Mock allows for low level terrain control. We are also introduced to an array of new magical items, which includes the Batraconomicon artifact. And yes, it is a risky tome. The Boggy Bodrang is a buffing humdrum and really creepy. Elixirs, if devolutions can make anthropomorphic humanoids revert to being animals, with hybrids such as the Wathi having a 50% chance to become giant frogs or orangutans. A jade frog wondrous figurine can warn you of traps or move transform into a frog and uh, there is a mask that enhances mythal spells. Cursed totems of the great old ones make that can plague of words target and there is a web woven gripply armor as well. Generally a neat selection. Mundane, mundane items such as snares that may be carried around, damage type not properly codified, a gripply fruit drink called of course burp, and Farfly Essence, which is essentially an anti-concealment bomb. They are so cool. They custom to make ghoul portraits. When somebody dies, and listen to this, the family commissions a super, 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 super ugly repulsive portrait. The deceased person returns to hideous and life. The portrait has a good chance of scaring them away. I love this. Heck, I love this for real, you know, if folks did that to me once I'm dead and gone. We also get a siege weapon, a macabre, simple, tongue-themed ballista, a drug that can induce astral projection. Some gems here that I really look forward to using. The supplement also presents three new archetypes, class options, for each race. The bloated champion is for the Bogarts and it's a new cause which nets deception and intimidate as class skills. Once per day a large person, self only, and has a theme of becoming more massive. The former ability lacks the proper descriptor, which is also missing from the capstone that lets you call a potent ally. Other than those niggles and no proper bonus types, a cool cause. Gripply arcane archers can choose to become zappers, which are essentially anti-vermin exterminators specialists that can act unimpeded underwater, among other things. The ability to do C duplicates freedom of movement, but it's extraordinary and as such should specify an activation action. The third option would be the Sothai Dwathi wizard, who is a disciple of Yoth Sothoth. They lose some weapon proficiencies, but get free action, low range, demoralized attempts with limited daily uses, uttering words of Yoth Kuro. The archetype also gets some esoteric exotic spells and is a bonded object that may be enchanted as a weapon. The appendix of the PDF is massive 
and contains some monster update rules regarding types and things like improved drag, quicken spell like ability, a couple of spells, and universal monster rules. From giant ants, flies, stat block misses, building and dragonflies to the leather wing toads called Mogobo and the dreaded Odd Dode. Four types of these Patrakians sires the Duathe. This section offers some really fun builds. In conclusion, editing and formatting oscillate on rules, language and formal level between admirable precision and missing some obvious components. Layout adheres to the series one column standard with purple highlights and the PDF is all about content with no interior artwork. The PDF also comes with extensive nested bookmarks that render navigation simple and very comfortable. Perifer and Mark Gedak deliver a PDF here that sports a few hiccups stemming from poor fire RPG by then not being finalized. That being said, the supplement does take advantage of several great rules from the scaling feats to spell balancing via categories, such as powerful curses being balanced by being exclusives. The PDF highlights several pluses of the game. Perifer is a great author and actually manages to make the respective races come to life, feel distinct. So that's a huge plus for me. At the same time, his rules oscillate between inspired and unconventional to less than impressive. Minor bonus granted feats is lame. Similarly, the rules are rather often precise and to the point, and in other instances, as noted above, they lack bonus types of sports a few oddities. In short, this is pretty much a definition of a mixed bag. While I personally consider this to be on the positive side of things, I would usually round down due to the hiccups. If you are particular about the details, you may wish to round down. However, considering the amount of content we get and the rather cool creatures feature in the extensive appendix, my final verdict would round up from 3.5 stars. And Zeitgeist, out. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been watching this in our YouTube channel or listening, if you've been listening to this in our podcast, please remember to subscribe to either or leave us a comment or a review in iTunes because that helps us an insane amount. And by all means, do leave me your comments in the video and share for everyone to see. Thank you very much indeed for being there. It is truly and genuinely appreciated. And until the next time, I will talk to you very soon. Take care. Thank you.